solve various issues, okay, let's say um, disadvantages of event subscribers with the so-called discovery event pattern and how you can use this knowledge to your advantage in your projects. And mm -hmm. uh, now, if you if you are uh, first time ever watching this series, welcome. And we are co recording this session, which will be uh, later available on YouTube. And as always, first we go quickly over our housekeeping rules. So um, your microphone will be stay muted. But if you have questions or any kind kind of our other feedback for us, please um, use the question window. For that and I and uh, Luke will we will collect the questions during the presentation and answer them directly if possible yeah and, uh, and to add to that uh, Martin uh, had asked us to uh, uh, wait till the end of the the presentation for the most part of the questions and if they're uh, very specific to a certain moment in this presentation we will uh, step in of course um, right yeah, next, as mentioned, this webinar will be later on available on YouTube. Our channel, Luke, you want to say something about our, your great channel, your new subscriber count? Yeah, we, we, we've been picking up from enough skills in uh, June, and now this will be the seventh session already. As you can see, the uh, recordings are there, nicely number of viewers, a nice number of subscribers. Um, the link, uh, and yes, if you to subscribe to our newsletters is the ones you will find here. Uh, if you look for Ariopa webinars on YouTube, you will surely find it. And uh, be free to join us there, uh, uh, get a, a good audience to uh, keep on going on this. Um, the newsletter has changed from a, a tiny letter, and yes, uh, Yasha pointed to, out to me that uh, in my, uh, uh, signature on my emails there's still the old one I have to change that but this is a, a very <laughs> understandable readable link nevertheless uh, if you can use that one reproduced and haven't been uh, subscribed to our newsletter please do so and we have some upcoming webinars on our website um, Yasha up to, up to you to ad advertise yeah sure um, uh, first the a uh, newsletter link is also available on your website. And yeah, the next event is on November the 26th, working with APIs. And yeah, uh, we consciously, yeah, looking for new speakers and topics. So <laughs> if you uh, have a topic you want to present for yourself or a su suggestion, su suggestion for us, uh, which we should cover, please let us know. So, yeah, yeah. and now before we start, uh, we can go to the next slide and we want to thank our sponsor for making this possible, providing the go to webinar sessions. And yeah, now it's time to handing off to Martin. Martin, are you ready to start? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. thank you, I'm ready to start. I'll make you a presenter. Here you go, Martin. Have fun. Okay. So thank you, uh, Luke and Yasha, for this introduction. And I welcome everybody with this uh, with this webinar. As I said, we'll be talking about controlling events with a discovery event pattern. So uh, Luke and Yasha already said something about me. So uh, here's just a little short. Uh, short summary. Um, two things I would like to mention before we start. That um, this session wouldn't be possible uh, be, uh, without also my former and current colleagues. So I would like to thank them for, uh, for helping me out uh, in this situation. And uh, we'll be, I'll be showing uh, the, the objects in code in a 2018 version. But um, the software is uh, usable directly in uh, the new Business Central AL and uh, convertible with the, the, the text to AL uh, functionality. So 
Uh, most important thing is, is that the concept, which we'll be uh, talking about today, uh, is usable in uh, all versions which uh, use event publishers and event subscribers. So, um, in uh, I would like to talk about how did we, how did I come to be within uh, this uh, situation, and why did I had to uh, uh, think of a solution for my problem. Well, the case was in my former uh, uh, um, uh, job, uh, I worked at a team that, uh, uh, used, that mostly made custom software for customers. And those customers uh, had a, a standard NAF and a vertical, which, will, which was supplied by a different business unit from the company. So to uh, provide in this custom software, we use uh, as, um, the modern tools like the event subscribers uh, and publishers to prevent uh, the, the modification of the standard products. So standard uh, NAF and the, and the vertical. Um, the problem I had uh, with a specific customer was that um, he, uh, the, 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 the customer wanted different custom software uh, on the same event publisher. So for instance, a, a posting action would uh, uh, have to um, lead in company A to a different uh, functionality, different process than in company B. And firstly, we had a solution which works based on uh, different code units, different custom code units, in which uh, code unit A was for company A and code unit B was for company B. Only then company C came along uh, in enough and they wanted to use functionality from A and B. So the uh, different code units weren't a solution anymore. Um, uh, being me, I don't like to copy uh, uh, code, uh, which prevent, gives me other problems in maintenance and such. So I would have to think an other solution in which I could easily um, um, uh, uh, could easily uh, quantify uh, functions, uh, event subscriber functions in this case, between uh, different uh, companies. Um, in the solution that I will be, uh, I thought of and will be discussing, uh, I also realized I had a solution for two other problems I had with event subscribers. And that was the fact that um, sometimes those those custom code was executed during uh, uh, during processes I didn't want to. Uh, a very good example was that if the the standard vertical uh, was updated and uh, a data upgrade process was uh, being uh, executed, then sometimes custom code uh, went off and had very unfortunate circumstances. Uh, the other problem I sometimes had with uh, uh, event subscribers was that uh, it was quite complex to debug because sometimes uh, you want to know uh, if the problem is in the custom or in the standard. And so uh, that could be uh, unfortunate. So the solution I thought of solved both uh, of all three of those uh, uh, points. And what did I use to solve those problems? That was the discovery event pattern. And um, when I first came across the discovery event pattern, that's uh, on the, uh, the wiki, page, wiki from uh, um, the design patterns for uh, dynamics. So if we open that, that's uh, this one. Um, 
first of all, I didn't understand what this, this, what this pattern entailed. Because um, discovery event pattern turns uh, um, software of how the way that we code uh, turns it around. As in, um, we solve the problem in, uh, in uh, a new code instead of in the generic uh, functionality. And so that perhaps will be not clear right now, but we'll be getting into that. So uh, I will all, 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 uh, recommend you to uh, read this uh, Wikipedia article. Um, perhaps not now, but uh, later on, if you want to go, go and uh, use the discovery event pattern. But um, after studying it and um, talking about it with uh, some, uh, some colleagues of mine, I understood. And I, I under, already, already uh, also understood there was this, uh, this is a solution to my problem. And um, so like, like I said in the, in, the, in, the, in the slide, we have a generic piece of functionality that hooks into lots of places. And to set it up, you might have to hook in all these parts of the application. That's, that's the old way. Well, the pattern turns this around. All the different modules set itself up in the generic app by raising a discovery event. So with the discovery event pattern, I uh, uh, built a generic uh, um, functionality, the generic application, in which I can control all uh, event subscribers or custom event subscribers I want to. So, what this uh, session will be mostly about code, so we'll be getting into that right now. Um, so, the solution um, only uh, 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 uses uh, three objects. And that's a, those are those uh, 70,000 objects we see right here. And I'll just walk, uh, walk uh, through it with you just to see uh, what happens. So we can now, for now, uh, disregard this one. This is one for the uh, leaders for this one. Um, so it's one table, one code unit, and one page. We'll look at the table. Um, yeah, okay, they look at the table and it only, we only have four fields, uh, a GUID field, code unit ID, description, and an active Boolean, in which the uh, GUID is the primary and only key of this table. If we go inside the table, we see there's a very little code in it, only a add event global function, uh, in which we do an insert. Okay, then I will go to the page. And the page only entails the code unit, the description, and the active field. Uh, the GUID is not important in this case because it's just a technical field to provide a, a key to the to the record. Uh, also, in this page, a little code, only one. That's a very important one. Um, that's the global function in my code unit, the handle company even discoveries, which triggers on the on open page in this case. So what this means is, is that the uh, discovery event pattern or the code gets triggered by opening this particular page. And what does that do? Well, we go into the code unit itself and we see the global function um, we, uh, we call in the page. And the first thing we do is we call the discovery company events function in which we use a uh, argument of the company event table as a buffer, so a temporary record. 
if we go to that, it's in the same code unit we see it's a uh, integration event publisher with the uh, parameter of the company event buffer. So actually the magic happens between this point and uh, the next time. Um, I will be getting into that later on as exactly what happens between those. Uh, we'll be moving on to the code and we'll be, uh, we'll be getting back to it as in when I call the, uh, the, the full uh, functionality to show what happens. Just to, 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 make, to finish it, uh, uh, we, we set the, the, the buffer record and for each record we, uh, do a, uh, we make another handle. Um, the first function is just a little check function. And then we'll be handling the buffer records. And as you can see, the rec in this case is the, the, the actual record for the company event. And if we didn't find it, we'll be making it. And if we do find it, we'll be changing the two uh, fields in which uh, I want to. Um, this is a choice of mine that, uh, in which I to uh, modify the records who use the same key. So I can update records. Moving on, when we have done the loop uh, through the buffer, we do a, a cleanup action uh, in which I also make a choice to um, uh, clean up uh, the real, the, the actual records if they're not in the buffer. So uh, functionality which has in the past call uh, used this functionality but not anymore will be deleted. So it won't be, see, it won't be uh, uh, um, seen in functionality uh, anymore. And I will clean up the uh, the buffer. So it's only a, 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 a few lines of code, and um, as I said, the magic happens between actually between those two lines. But the question is, how do we fill that buffer? Well, I'll be showing that. Um, first off, a code unit, a demo code unit, in which we have two uh, event subscribers, uh, the unopened customer card and the unopened customer list, in which we uh, provide a message. Uh, this is, of course, a simple, but it's here just to show you it works. So when I post customers, I see the customer message. And when I open a customer card, I see the customer card message. So first off, how do we get these uh, 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 functionality into my company event management? As I said, the 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 um, the, the, disc the discovery event uh, gets triggered by opening the, the page. So if I do that right now, it's empty. You can see that it's also empty uh, in the table. So I want to I want to control these two event subscribers with my uh, company event management. So here I have a second version of the same code unit, and I will be uh, adding the the, uh, the second line by myself. The first line was already added in which uh, 
I um, made a new function that's the event subscriber in itself, which subscribes to my discover company event publisher from my code unit. And because I have the company event buffer as a uh, argument, as a parameter, and a COBOL function on that record, I can call the add event function, in which I already gave you one example for the uh, open customer card. So I'll make the same thing before the unopen customer list. So the company event buffer at event okay as you can see I uh, uh, need a do it to pre, uh, provide me with a unique key to my record I chose the go it because it uh, ensures me or almost ensures me that the record is unique um, and perhaps you will wonder why didn't I just type in this nice do it right here? Well, uh, I'll be using this do it multiple times. So I'm a, uh, a developer who thinks about not doing everything twice. So by using this uh, function as here, I have the same do it uh, whenever I call this function. In this case, it's a local function, but uh, if we, as we can see later on, it also could be a, like a global function, uh, which will be used throughout the uh, uh, throughout tr throughout the, the the program. So, if I do the same like here, will be um, I'm adding a uh, on open customer list do it and so it's actually quite simple no parameters no arguments only a return time do it and now we have the same so because we have to change that how do we get a constant to do it now we can just go on the internet example the uh, online GUID generator and we can generate some GUIDs like this or more uh, in this case because of the demo I already uh, provided a uh, beta GUID for this particular function so I'll be using that so one moment so I'll copy and paste it in like this okay So I'll provide the unopened customer list to it. Um, I need a new GUID, a new code unit ID, and a new description. So I'll provide the code unit. Like this is the code unit where I'm in right now, of course. Uh, supposed to happen like this and we give it a new description and in this case uh, we use the um, the function name it could be anything um, but in this case it would be the best case to use the function to make it the most descriptive descriptive because the functionality can be used by people um, outside being a developer. So we'll, we'll be seeing that we, we will provide a, a interface which which uh, 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 colleagues with uh, less um, technical knowledge can use the the functionality to 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 uh, 
activate or deactivate subscribers. So uh, I don't. Uh, developers don't have to go into the code and, for instance, program exits or uh, make any uh, difficult technical uh, modifications. So we have added two. Uh, two records, so we have made them discoverable. So if we finish this, I go. So if we go back to the code unit. This triggers the publisher. When the publisher gets triggered. The Event subscribers will react and will use uh, uh, by call to the add event function. We'll be adding a record to the buffer record. So the buffer gets filled and we'll be, we'll be going through the full functionality. As we said, looking to the buffer record little check per record, and we'll be inserting non-existing ones, modifying existing ones in, based on the Druid key, and deleting uh, uh, any old records and such. So if we now go to the table, and I will run the table, we'll see it's still empty. If I now run the page, which will trigger the discovery event, we see record has, records have been added. And we can also see the same thing if we now open the table. So these are not temporary records, these are actual records. Like this. So I see a code unit, the description. And I can say if you want to activate or deactivate. But does it already work? Of course, because if I, it's 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 like now it's like uh, the function are deactivated. But if I still go to the customer page, I still get a message, and the same goes for customer car because we haven't done anything to stop the event subscriber and, and the functions who are in it from executing so how do we do that well in the uh, code unit uh, um, um, we also have one more global function and that's the uh, company event active global uh, global function in which I can uh, provide a new it. And if the company event isn't present, I will be act, uh, also always exit false, or else I will be exiting the active Boolean. So no record means uh, uh, no execution, and or else the execution based on what I have set in the active field. How do we add this to our uh, custom code? Well, we'll be going to the third iteration. And this is a uh, already a full uh, uh, modification for both records. But we can see here, I have added a local function within this code unit, in which calls the global function we just uh, looked at. And, I, and every event subscriber, I call this local function with the uh, GUID, in which you see the, the, function, uh, the, the function with the constant GUID returned. So this, this is one of the reasons I use a function to uh, to provide with the keyword. 
So then I have to uh, type all the goods uh, all over again and make typos. And if it's not active, it will be actually on the same here. So we just saw that the records were added. We see that the the uh, the the exit is uh, is uh, added. So now we should expect that the, uh, uh, the company event management has any effect on my event subscribers. So we'll check. So we're going back. And when I press customers, I do not see anything. And the same goes for my customer card because I don't have, uh, I didn't activate them. So if we open the page, we see they're both inactive. So now I'll, for instance, uh, activate the customer card version and leave the customer list deactivated. So I open the custom list again, nothing happens. And now I see the customer card message. So I know my functionality works. Okay. So now we have provided a uh, interface which um, Shouldn't be too difficult for most people to say, I would like to activate or deactivate uh, this function in this code unit in this company, because the table is uh, per company. So I already uh, uh, solved the problems uh, in which I could um, deactivate uh, uh, event subscribers for data upgrades. And the same goes for um, uh, debugging. So, for instance, I want to debug a something and a uh, event subscribers in a way I can just deactivate um, the subscriber so I can uh, see uh, if the problem is in the standard or in my custom code, etc., uh, etc., et whatever you want it to be. Um, I also solve what is the problem with the um, the um, the, 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 the different functionalities between the two companies. So if we now uh, have one more function in my code unit which is applicable, it's just a local. Uh, let's see here, uh, which uh, I have two functions. The first one is the uh, event subscriber on the on after insert company, uh, which calls my uh, clear company event new company function here, and uh, which I clear in the records in my new company. So I start with a clean slate in my new company. So just a, re a reminder, we have here in Cronus, a on open customer card active and on open customer list deactivated. So now I'll um, make a new company. By uh, copying it. Just a moment to wait, it should be fast. Okay. Um, if I uh, open the company, and when I open the table, it should be empty, and it is. 
So, and if I go back, it's still it's it's still filled in the other one. Huh? We can still see that. So, in Cronus, we really haven't lost anything. Just to prove you. Yeah. That was perhaps a bit fast, but it's still here. Okay, back to my second company, in which everything is empty. Run the table. And I run the, the page, which triggers my discovery. And I see two new records in which both of them are both are deactivated. Um, and my table is filled again. So I can here just uh, just uh, do the opposite of what I did in the other company. So I say only custom, mobile customer list is active. And we can still test that by going to customer list and we see the customer's message. And when I open the card, no message. So I have achieved what I want. And I, I can, uh, I have to make a, 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 I can control which event uh, triggers in which company. And I have done that by providing a, a quite simple interface in which um, um, uh, any uh, capable user, uh, super user, or, or will be able to activate or deactivate the uh, event subscribers. And the most important thing is that I have I have achieved this without changing the generic functionality. So I can just put these three objects wherever I want to and how what and how whatever however I want to. And I'm solving the problems of uh, in this case activating and deactivating a uh, event in the event itself. So I can just uh, plug in multiple code units as long as I use uh, this uh, this code, I can uh, uh, control what I want in the generic app. So this was uh, the uh, well the basic functionality. Um, what I realize with the discovery event pattern, there's many more options which I can use this uh, uh, pattern for. Um, for instance, I have used two separate GUIDs for two separate functions. Um, so I discriminate between the two functions. It's also quite possible that the both the functions use the same GUID for uh, the record and for executing uh, for when uh, if it's active or not or something else. So, for instance, I could use uh, make a a a, a GUID a global GUID, uh, which I then. Um, uh, which I can use in multiple functionalities uh, through my uh, application to see if uh, it's active or not. So, for instance, uh, if we look at the future and we look at extensions and apps, we can use a, uh, a GUID uh, with the discovery event pattern to uh, uh, control the behavior of the extension in the app. Uh, that could be a something like uh, enable enablement or visibility or um, something else, whatever you want. Um, I think 
most of you can think about uh, 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 solutions in your own situation in which the discovery event pattern will be uh, usable. Uh, I want to mention one more thing. Um, this table, this add event, can also contain, of course, uh, um, uh, object metadata. Um, what I mean by that is um, I've seen solutions, and there's also one in in, uh, uh, in, in standard NAV in the, the service connections facility, if I remember correctly, in which a, a page uh, gets uh, added, and that page um, is a wizard which gets started. So if we think about apps and extensions in the future, we can just add uh, a, uh, an app or an extension with this functionality. We can add a specific uh, page ID, which we can run through the, the, the generic functionality. And when we do that, we set up our app or extension. Uh, and so any other setup fields can we be controlled by that. Or we can use this more like in a custom uh, uh, setting to uh, add uh, reports towards um, specific pages with a page extension. So we get a, a generic uh, page extension button in which we, if we push that, we can see uh, the uh, custom reports we want to run through that context because we have added that uh, report ID to the uh, discovery event. Yes. Okay. So that was it for the code tool so far. Uh, it's quarter to five, so I think it was a nice, nicely on time. I, it, I would like to uh, ask you if you have any more questions. I don't see questions on the list, uh, so a clear story. Uh, I do have a question, Martin, um, in the sense that uh, to, to, let's say, how many events uh, did you get in a certain uh, uh, implementation in that sense of how many uh, uh, did you typically have in, in, in a solution uh, to be able to uh, uh, um, to manage them uh, through that active part? Is it is it 10 or 20 or 100 uh, records in that table? Uh, in, in, in my case, uh, it was about like, um, I, I think about uh, 20 or something in the, uh, uh, to control. Um, so that's, that's, that's not more, many. Um, it, it's a, a very basic uh, interface. I can imagine adding buttons which can deactivate uh, everything at once or something like that. So I can uh, deactivate uh, what I want just with a uh, press of the button, um, something like that. So yeah, that, that, that's about it. Uh, so. And, and is there, a, a do you have a specific uh, kind of events where you would like to be able to control them this way, or and, and, and maybe specific events you surely don't want to do that? Um, what do you mean? Well, just it's a generic question, but I could imagine that there are events you want to have this registered eh, so that you can control them, and that there are mm -hmm. maybe event subscribers you wouldn't want to do that with. Oh, of course. So you uh, you would uh, you would like to prevent users from deactivating certain event subscribers. Yeah, is is there in your experience that you have some situations where you decided surely not to do that? Um, I, I did not in that particular case, but I could imagine there are certain ones you would like to do that. But uh, the most important thing is, uh, of course, that um, as long as uh, this this line of code isn't in an event subscriber, in this case, event subscriber, it also could be in a in a separate function locally 
uh, on some, somewhere else. Uh, as long as not there, the, co the code will, will execute. So you can always choose not to add certain uh, event subscribers or other functionality towards the discovery event packet. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Martin, we have uh, one question from the audience. Um, Gerd asked, could you use the bind subscription functionality to bind the subscribers dynamically instead of subscribing using static automatic? Or is the bind subscription, unbind subscription too slow? Um, I have, uh, when I uh, uh, thought of this solution, uh, I was unaware of the uh, bind and unbind subscription. So that, that was, uh, uh, so I didn't account into that. So I also have little experience with binding and unbinding subscription. Um, so I haven't also haven't really explored those options. Uh, I could think uh, we could like uh, combine those two with uh, 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 the bind and unbind is. Um, uh, particular on the uh, on the, the 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 records in the discovery uh, event uh, or in the in the in the table, but I haven't tried. So it's it's also very important to to realize this is a very basic uh, bare bones functionality. I think in which uh, I would like to uh, challenge you to use this IDE to um, make it better and use it in your particular situation. Okay, thank you. I hope this answers the question as far as it is possible. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, I have a question as well, but I guess you mentioned it earlier, but just to make it clear, and I probably know the answer, um, as you show this here in Seaside, does this work in AL2? Yeah, it does. Um, uh, in the past, I have uh, converted these objects uh, uh, to the, these three objects to to AL and uh, uh, use it as a separate uh, app and uh, publish it. Uh, unfortunately, um, I did not have the time. Um, before in, in the session to to do the same thing, but I can guarantee you this will work in AL with AL objects. Great, thank you. I have done this, so it works. Good. As so, there are not any more questions, I think we have come to an end. And we still have to update the uh, newsletter URL. So please use the one on the first slides where we mentioned the newsletter. And yeah, that's everything for my part too. Luke, anything else you want to add to bring no. this to an end? No, thank you very much. Uh, it was cl quite clear, Martin. Thank you for your time. and. Uh, Yasha, thank you for joining in as a new moderator. Um, yeah, the recording, normally I will get it uh, a, a, an hour or so later and I'll uh, do my best to get it on YouTube tonight and otherwise it will be there on tomorrow. And uh, well, we'll meet again in two weeks on the next uh, webinar. Yes, uh, thank you all. And uh, I hope you, can, uh, hope you can use what I've told you today and uh, perhaps uh, to the next time. Yeah, thanks for joining in and goodbye. Yeah, we're closing bye -bye. down. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.